Hey guys, this is part two, and this is the actual demonstration of my Honeywell CD200A smoke detector. I got this off of eBay, and you saw in the unboxing video that it had never been opened. And it was made in 1978. Uh, sorry about the vibration sounds. But, anyway. Uh, this one, it, it's, um, I think it's a more upgraded version of the TC series that we're all used to seeing. Um, now Honeywell had two styles. They had this style with the slotted vents that run perpendicular to the center test button. And they had the style that we're all familiar with, the, this one, that had the three rows of round holes, the button in the center, and the four large side vents. But this style is much more common from my experience than this style. Because I've never seen one of these installed, but I have seen these before. Um, so, yeah. I So I'm pretty sure that this came after this one. Um, anyway, the vents on the front, I realized they kind of resemble the Jameson Code 1 vents that you'd see. Because they kind of do resemble that. I just thought that was interesting. So maybe Jameson Code 1 used this style. They, they copied this venting because obviously that came way after this. So, yeah, there's a side profile view. As you can see, it's very different from this one. And then there's the back. There's no labeling at all on the back. And the mounting holes are there. And then there's a bunch of pluses for some reason. And then there's where the cover opens up. Right there's a little tab that says push. Um, anyway, it's got a hinge cover. So let's open it up, as you can see. So another upgrade to the TC series over here, whereas the cover was completely removed on that one. And on this one, it has a hinge cover. There's the battery right there. It's a, similar to a first alert, how it, the tabs are mounted right on the PCB. And there's the labels right there, as you can see. If you want to read them, you can just pause the video. I'm not going to read them. If I can get my phone to focus. Hey there. Um, if you want to read them. And then, of course, there's the circuitry right there. There's the horn. It's a normal Kobishi DC squealer. And the sensor right there with the test button on top. And then right over here is a sensitivity adjustment. And just like on the TC series, this one has a sensitivity adjustment, but it's a lot different. Instead of there being a, like a switch or a knob in the TC series, this one's got this weird clamp thing. And what you do is you turn it like that. As you can see, that's the minimum sensitivity right there. And then to change it back, you just it like that. It's just, it's really strange. It's something a lot different than I've ever seen. One thing I found interesting is that possibly another upgrade they made in between these and this is that notice the amount of radioactive material that the amount of radioactive material that this one has is 4.4 microcuries. However, this one has only one microcurie, so it's a lot like the detectors of today. Um, there, right, says it right there. And it is emerosine, just regular emerosine. Um, here's the back of the cover. There's the test button right there. And there's the cover latch and the little stops right there. There's the hinges and the vents. Yeah. And then there's the there's the full model number right there. Like how in the TC series it's like you have like TC forty nine A and then the full number is TC forty nine A eleven ninety five. This one is C two hundred A is the the basic model number and then the full model number is C D two hundred A one thousand three. So this isn't showing up on the camera. 
You can kind of see it there. Um, so. And I'll show you the box right here. Here's the box it came in. You saw this in my last video. And here's the packaging. Um, this warranty right here came with it. And you can see this apply, it applies to models TC-49A, I have a TC-49A, TC-89B, I also have one of those, TC-489D, or TC-49D, TC-89D, TC-489A, CD-100A, CD-200A, and CD-300A. Now, of course, TC-49A is the hardwired version. Actually, it's right up here. There's the TC-49A. Of course, everyone's seen, everyone's, that's the most popular model from my experience. The TC-89B right here, the battery powered version of the TC-49. Um, TC-49D is actually the hardwired version of this one, and I have never seen one of those or one of these installed, so they're probably pretty rare. TC-89D. Now, I have seen an advertisement for a TC-89D on online, like on an old newspaper, and it, I was expecting it to look like this, but it actually looked like this, and it was just, they said it was battery-powered only, you know, um, so I think it's just this, just with a different model number. TC-489A. I'm not sure what that is. That might be a different version of the TC-49A. I don't know. CD100A is the line cord model of this, so it's like a TC49D with a line cord. CD100, or yeah, CD100A just said that. CD200A is this one, obviously, and CD300A. I'm not sure what that is exactly, um, but there's a video of one of these on like a TV news promo. If I can close up the cover there on like a TV news promo from the 70s, and it was one of these, but it had an escape light on the vents right here, like in this portion. So, and that is most definitely very rare. And I wondered if maybe that's what CD, the CD300A is, because I mean, yeah, I don't know. But it could also be the TC49D with a battery backup. But that could also be TC-489A, because if you look at Edlin's video of the TC-49D, there was a battery clip right there, so who knows. Someday, maybe, one of them will pop up on eBay and we'll finally figure it out. Um, yeah. There's the battery right there that came with it. It's a Mallory Duracell. I think I'm going to leave it in this package, because it is quite corroded, and the top is bulged up and sort of actually popped off, because I have three Mallory Duracells in my vintage battery collection and you know this one just seems like I I just want to keep it in its original packaging and here's the owner's manual I'm not going to read it all out because I don't like to bore people with this but I'll let you I'll just show each page and if you want to read something you can just pause it there's the contents and there's a diagram of the alarm Here's installation. Okay. And this is where to place the smoke detector. Good, better, best. And I guess these are like two story houses and everything. And then here is that notorious four stages of fire thing where they lie. Right here it says invisible. The beginning stage of involves invisible and sometimes odorless particles of combustion and can last minutes or days depending on the material involved. Honeywell warns here that is not true. Ionization detectors do not warn here. Only photoelectric will. Um, and then there, smoke, it does not warn there either. Only photoelectric will. And here, flame, that's where it would warn. And then of course heat is where the heat alarm would warn. And then here is be prepared in case of fire. Little tips of how to get out of a burning house. And then right here is know your fire hazards, so like cooking and electrical matches, fire, place, trash, testing and maintenance. Yeah. 
information about battery replacement and how to test. There's a test button, maintenance, cleaning. Right here's Honeywell Babysitter Guide. So I guess if you had a babysitter, you could give this to tear this off and give it to them, and they would know if there's a fire, if the alarm sounds, to what to do. It's pretty pretty interesting. And then here is more information, nuisance alarms, and the NFPA protection requirements. And right here, they give you a grid to sketch out your own escape plan. Just thought that was kind of neat. They don't, they certainly don't give you that on today's smoke detectors. They should, though. I guess nowadays they expect you to draw out your own. <sighs> so, I guess it's time for a test. So, like you saw, this one has a regular Kobishi CLB series squealer horn, so let's give it a test. It's a little bit lower pitched than this one, which is slightly higher pitched, but it sounds kind of raspy as well. I actually quite like it. Actually, push the button. Okay, now let's test it without the cover. So, that's about it for my Honeywell CD200A. Uh, thanks for watching, and... Hope you enjoyed, and hopefully more to come. Here we go. One more test for you. Okay. Bye.